Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing the About Dice project. So I'm going to open that up here. I could also go open, um, open Dice project, that'll bring this folder up. And so here, okay, so we're going to be working with classes again. So um, here we have a commented out class set. Um, if we go rake back in our um, terminal, in our root folder for the uh, Cohen's project, Cohen's project, uh, it looks like we're failing on line 11. And here's line 11. So it's saying um, test can create a dice set. And so that, that's just saying we need to be able to instantiate this class. So let's just uncomment this and put a comma here. So how would that look in pry? If we were to put that in our, our REPL, that would make it so that we could go uh, dice set dot new. And because that works, because we can go dice set dot new, that's going to solve this pro project because this is trying to assert that it's n uh, not nil. So if I exit out of here, and then you can see I'm still in the koans, or, oh, CD, uh, koans, desktop, koans. You can see that I'm in here, ls, so I've changed directories into the dice project. And so here, okay, so now um, if I go IRB, now I open my REPL, REPL if I go dice is equal to dice set dot new, dice is going to be nil. And so we're trying to assert that it's not nil. And so how do we do that? We make it so that we have a dice set. So now we've created a dice set and um, we can instantiate it now. So if we go dice is equal to dice set dot new, then if we put dice in there, um, we can say it's not nil. It is not, it's false, it's not nil. Um, so that will solve this initial one. So let's run rake again here. And it looks like we are moving on to eight, love, number 18. So 18 here. Okay, so the thing about this one is it's kind of tricky because you kind of have to understand the whole uh, aspect of it. So um, one thing I think that we can do is, okay, so we want it to be values, right? We want the, uh, so here, I'll just walk, walk through this. So we instantiate a new dice set. We, we want a method on there called roll, which is going to be able to take one parameter. So we might as well just write that in there now. So we want a method in there called roll. So we're going to call def roll. And that's going to take a, a value um, that's going to return an array. And if we do dice.roll, we want to ensure that the values have the size of five. So if they push in five, we want five rolls. And so we want to call this, uh, we're going to pass it in like this, uh, number of um, dice to roll. Yeah, we'll just call it rolls, number of dice. And that, not rolls, we want it to be roll, because we're trying to make it so these tests pass. So we need to do exactly the way they say it. Okay, cool. And so we wanted to do that. So dice.values.each do value, and they, they want to assert that each value is greater than or equal to between one and six. So how would we do that? Well, Ruby has a pretty awesome thing. I think it's Rand. Okay, so Rand gives you that, and we can do a range if you remember that from the past. So one through six. So random just gets you this number in between here. But with Ruby, you can go Ruby Rand dot dot six, and that'll get you a integer between <clears throat> one and six. So as you can see, I'm calling this a bunch of times and it's giving me different random numbers all the time. And it's always between one and six. You can see there's a six here and a one here. So this is how you get the random die. Um, so another thing, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this a little bit slowly just to, and then we're gonna refactor later, but we wanna be able to set the values and then we also want to be able to call the values. So if you go, right now, we've got dice in here, but if we go dice.values, we get undefined, there is no values. So what happens, so here we could go def values, and then we could just return, well, we wanna have our values in here, right? But right now we don't have the values in here, so what we wanna do is def, we could have set values, right? Cool. And so if we set the values, um, that's going to mean that, um, and then we're going to say, um, our values here, we're going to have that passed in and we're going to say at values is equal to values. So this is the ones that are, we, we set. So if I were to save this and pump this into the IRB, it's going to overrun our, or it's going to overroll our last one. And so now we can have um, dice is equal to dice set dot new, right? And dice dot values 
Well, right now it's equal to nil, right? So we could go dice dot set values and we can make it equal to maybe just have it like a single roll. And so now if we went dice dot values, because it's been instantiated, it just passes that in there. Um, okay, so we've created a new instantiation of dice set. And here we set, we asked if there were values. There were no values because it wasn't set uh, initially. And so then we go dice dot values, which returns the number that we have. And now what we want to do, be able to do is go dice dot roll, so, right? Or roll three. Well, right now that just gets us nothing, right? And it doesn't even change the values. So well, what do we want to do? So this is an instance variable of this. I think we could go dice dot instance variables. And that actually passes, that shows us that we have uh, values there. So how would we do it so that when we roll, we set our values? Well, first off, we want to, on every new roll, we want to erase all of our old values. So we're going to say our at values is equal to an empty array, right? And then, so the number of dice. So this is going to be passed in like a one, two, or three. So we could do, well, um, okay, so let's do it really um, kind of strangely at first, and then I'll show more efficient ways of doing it. So um, we could set a uh, index is equal to zero, and we could say uh, while the index is less than the number of dice, then we also want to um, iterate up, right? So index plus is equal to one. Um, so every time we go through here, index is equal to one. Is at, uh, we add one to the index and then we go up and as long, and then once the number of dice, say the number of dice is one, then once the index hits one, we're gonna go through here. But then when index is one and the number of dice is one, it's no longer there. And so we're just going to have one value pumped in. So we want to take our values and we want to shovel in. So we want to add a new roll. And the way, how do we get the roll? We go uh, math or uh, rand one dot dot six, right? Because that gets us a random number. So there it goes two, two, three, five, four, six, and it'll give us a one as well. If you just keep going, it is random. There we go. There's our one. So one through six. So we've got all these random numbers. So we're going to go rand one dot dot six. Cool, and then so once the index is, uh, does that, well then we're gonna push a, push a new random number in here as many times as that, and then once we're done, we're just gonna return the values, right? And so um, let's, let's test to this real quick. So we've got our dice set here. I can copy this and paste it into here, and if I go dice is equal to dice set dot new, uh, dice dot values is gonna be nil right now, right? But we could go um, dice dot roll, and we could say roll three times, and now we've we've got we're returning an array of four, three, and six. Um, and if we did it again, we'd still get random numbers anywhere between one and six, right? So we're just rolling randomly. And so if we go dice dot values, you can see we've got two, six, uh, six two. Uh, we could do set values too, but I'm going to show you something in just a second that makes it so a lot of this code is uh, useless. Now my guess is this is going to pass all the tests. So if I run a rake command over here. Cool, we're on to about inheritance. So uh, we've technically solved this and this is it. But um, we're gonna do some refactoring now, which I think is gonna be really valuable. Um, so let's look at this. How can we make this simpler? Well, re you remember in our last one, I think it was about classes. The whole thing was about here, you can see about classes. What, what are we doing here? We've got, um, initially we're doing it the way that we did, that we just did the about dice class, right? Uh, we have a set name, um, and and here we're showing that we can, okay, so set name and name. Here we're doing it, this is kind of like the old style. But what they do here is they show us that you can remove this set name and parameter passing in by just adding ATTR reader. Okay, so I'm just going to lower this down here so you can see it. Um, yeah, and it's right, ATTR reader right here. So you can remove the set name by doing that. So instead of doing this, we could just say ATTR reader and then go values. Because here they've got set name and name and here they're saying ATTR reader and then they're passing in a symbol of that name. So that's how we're able to pass this. So if I save this and run the rake task, we should get this um, about inheritance. So here we've just refactored our dice code a little bit so that we have ATTR reader. But 
another thing that we learned in about classes is that we can make it an ATTR accessor and we can also get rid of the values part, right? So instead of having ATTR reader, we could call this an ATTR assessor in the values and we can get rid of this method, which is pretty cool. So we're cleaning up our code with each method. Um, if we run the rake task, you'll see that it's still, uh, we're still passing all the tests. So what we're doing right now is we've just refactored this. Okay, so um, another one we can do is modern Ruby doesn't need parentheses, so we could get rid of this. And um, that would make it a little bit cleaner, perhaps. Um, and so now what's, an, what's another thing going on? Well, when we pass in the number of dice, um, say it's like two. Well, in Ruby, there's another way to do this. We could do a for loop, or Ruby has one thing where you can go like two dot times do whatever. And then you you can do something twice. So if I were to say two dot times do x, and then I'm just gonna say print, um, you know, useful programmer, and then end, you'll see it printed useful program out two times. And so it ran that. So instead of doing this giant instantiation of an index and values and incrementing it, we could just go the number of dice, however many n times that is, we're going to do, um, well, well I could, we could just call it whatever. I don't think it actually matters. We can just say uh, roll. And then instead of doing the index and things like that, we can just add the value. So we take the values and we pipe in the random number one through six. Uh, and so that would be able to get rid of all of this. And then we could get, we could have it just like this. So if I were to save this, I think, and run the rake task, we'd see we're still passing, we're still onto about inheritance, which is great. So we've um, rolled this down. Um, you know, we can make this value actually a single line thing as well. So we could just pump it down to here and that works just as well. So um, if we were to say, we set our values, we say a number of times, so say it's like three times. Uh, let's, let's make it five. And we say dot times, five times we roll and we've got the values and we pipe in a random number. And so now if we were to go values, we see one, two, three, four, five die. And, um, and then we just uh, use um, implicit returns to pass the values back. And so if we ran a rake task now, you'll see we're still on to about inheritance, which is good. That means that we're on our next one. Um, this is super duper valuable stuff, and it's kind of difficult to understand. Um, if we were to say um, dice one is equal to dice set dot new, and then let's say we do dice two. Now you'll see that there, this number here is slightly different. This is the hash map, so the, these, these are separate things. So if we were gonna go dice one, dot roll and we fi rolled it five times our dice one dot values is equal to this two six four two one but if we go dice two dot values you'll see it hasn't been set yet because that's another set of dice that haven't been that that object hasn't been uh, mutate uh hasn't been you know worked with so if we go dice two dot roll and th this time we, we just roll it with four dice you'll see we've got one two three four so dice two dot values is has that number but dice one dot values has this number because they're different we're instantiate them instantiating them differently so this is called this is this is the basis for um, object oriented programming it makes it so that you can instantiate these objects and they all act the same um cool this is a really cool one i hope you guys enjoyed this one if i were to save my work over here and run the rake task i just want to make sure i've got this right you can see we're going to move on to about inheritance next, so that's good for this one. Hope you guys enjoy this. We'll see you in the next lesson.